And we welcome you back to the special edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. I'm John Bachman, kind of filling in a little bit for Steve. Of course, we do have Stevie standing by via Skype from his snow-affected home of New Jersey. We'll get to him in just a second. Also, guys, there's a chance for you to weigh in on the top the conversations we're having here on Newsmax TV today. A lot of comments about Bo Bergdahl. A lot of folks want to talk about 2016 in the GOP field. Of course, we got more coming up here. We're going to talk about Obamacare and a new damning report from the CBO. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Again, I'm John Bachman, and this new report we're talking about, Peter Marisi is joining us now via Skype. Uh, he is also a professor at the University of Maryland, so appropriately enough, he is Skyping in from Maryland. But that report from the CBO reveals that the federal government is going to likely have to shell out $50,000, $50,000 for every person who gets health insurance under Obamacare. So what does this mean for the American economy? How are we going to pay for it, especially with Medicare and Medicaid already strapped? As I mentioned, Peter Marisi is joining us. Steve Malls is going to take over the interview from here, and I'll chime in if I have anything intelligent to say. Gentlemen? <laughs> Stop it, John. All right, John Poffman, thank you. And uh, our friend Peter Marisi does join us. Peter, thank you very much. Um, uh, the government will spend $1.993 trillion over a decade and take in $643 billion in new taxes, penalties, and fees related to Obamacare. And as John said, it all translates to $50,000 in taxpayer money for every American who gets health care, uh, health insurance uh, under Obamacare. Well, that's an absurd number. I mean, think about it. The family median income in the United States is a little bit less than $60,000. So uh, that would indicate that, you know, for a household with two people, it would be 20% of the, of the household income would have to be shelled out by the federal government. It, it doesn't add up to me, to be honest with you. What we do know is that it's going to be terribly expensive. Just like with any other entitlement that always seems to be much more expensive than we anticipated, and we can look forward to living the way the Europeans do. If you go to Europe, they don't own a lot of clothes. They're not very nice. Uh, they don't live in very big houses, and they're not very nice. But what they get to do is to ride on public transportation all they want between their place of employment and the doctor's office. Yeah, I love free, free, free. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Let, let's talk about, uh, you mentioned Europe. Um, the Europe Q QE, if you will, uh, how do you believe that that affects the decision of the Fed going forward uh, with regard to what to do with interest rates here? Well, it makes it more difficult to manage interest rates here because there's going to be such a flood of money into the United States that's already begun because of conditions in Asia and Europe. But the Europeans' inability to come to grips with their macroeconomic problems, uh, to let go of the almost religious connection they have with the euro, which is a failed enterprise, uh, and to essentially let the southern European countries return to their own currencies and restructure their debt, their inability to accept these solutions, you know, means that Europe will continue to be mired in recession. And so if the European Central Bank just prints a lot of money, that money's going to come here. I mean, why would anybody invest newly printed money in Italy in Italy? That's a, a confounding question, uh, to say the it's least. It's not a confounding question. The answer is nobody but a perfect fool would invest in Italy. I mean, <laughs> I mean the, 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 the question on its face is, is, is one, now. you know, who, who, who would do that, as you mentioned. We have this, uh, the QE now happening in Europe, and we hear the president during the State of the Union talking about uh, the economic situation in this country is, is very rosy right now, but just today, uh, we see the stock markets, the major indices, the Dow and the Nasdaq dropping below 2% at ports, portions of the day. Gasoline prices very low. Uh, are these indicators, Peter, of, of real problems coming home to roost here in this country economically? Well, one has to remember that America's largest companies, the S&P 500, which is 80% of the publicly traded equity, earns more than half their profits abroad. And things are not good in Asia and things are not good in Europe. I mean, Microsoft came in with bad earnings today, or disappointing earnings, I should say, uh, because of conditions in Japan and China. Uh, the U.S. economy itself is hardly cracking on all eight cylinders. I mean, to listen to President Obama's State of the Union speech, you would think that this was the second age of Pericles. And by in the reality, way, Peter, we should, we should point out, we should point out just for the numbers, the Dow down 291, the Nasdaq down 90, the S&P down 27. 
And one company that did rocket after uh, after hours uh, with earnings on both revenues and, uh, per, and and per share, Apple. Apple severely beat the street, and they talk about China being one of the reasons for that. But Peter, always great to talk to you, sir. And we'll talk to you again very very soon, John. All right, Steve, we'll be back with callers and uh, your comments coming up right after the short commercial break.